Hello everyone, it's back and back to what's on my workbench. Um, so I got everything put in the right place after uh, making a little mistake on one resistor, put that in place. And uh, now the first step is um, replace C77 and C83 on this Mega Drive card with uh, 10 microfarad bipolars. It's, these guys right here. I have a little extra solder to the pads real quick. Iron is set to uh, 300C. I got all the other parts taken off the reel so I can actually uh, work with them. Let's see the other one, C83. I'm going to be doing most of this just by eye, so if I'm doing anything close, I'll throw it up on the camera. I do have my stereo microscope going on here too, in case I really need to get a good 3D view of it all. Um, they specify bipolar caps, so I assume it's going to be biased in one direction, so you don't want to put an electrolytic a, a, a polar, polarized electrolytic on there, because they'll, of course, they will eventually. Uh, form hydrogen and pop you don't want to do the, uh, that I think I've got tantalums here if I remember correctly but they are not they don't have any polarity there's there's no mark on them for that let's see oh, that looks awful today It's going to be the first cap. Trim that down. Make sure I have the spacing okay. Yeah, that should do. A good amount of solder on the board already. Let's see if that's enough. I like using this wide bladed uh, soldering iron, a solder tip, I should say, because it uh, allows me to hit both solder joints simultaneously. Makes it a lot easier working on these surface mounts. Okay, that's one of them. Luckily, my eyes aren't too bad yet. I can actually still do most of this uh, without a microscope. So I'm sure someday, in the not too distant future, I'm gonna have to worry about that. Turned 46 this year, so it's a coming. I have a year my optometrist goes, you think it's time for bifocals or progressives and it's like not yet I can still see really clearly up to about, about four inches away from my eyes I do wear glasses I do uh, um, but I'm nearsighted so don't really need to do anything for close-up work yet. It's just one side of solder. Let's get the other side in there. There we go. Pretty solid looking joint there actually. That's not going anywhere. So this whole mod is to improve the sound coming off of the uh, this Mega Drive card. Okay, so that was that. So next we have replace uh, R60 and R61 with 100K resistors. R60 and R61. There's R61. Where's R60? Over there. Oh, 
Add just a little bit of solder to it. Sorry, there's not too much to show you on this video in case anyone's really fiending to watch somebody solder. So that's the uh, 100K. I did end up having a buy these parts off a of digikey which is a uh, very familiar to anyone who does industrial uh, or manufacturing they're a very big supplier of components um the prices weren't too outlandish actually so i can't complain uh, Wow, the small stuff gets me after a while. Just trying to maneuver it into place. I have a lot of respect for pick and place machines as they pick them up and place them really accurately. But that's their whole purpose of existence is the pick and place parts. See how it looks under the scope. This is R60. If I can get over there far enough and I'll turn around. Let's take a look. There's our 61 there. It's a tiny bit crooked. Maybe I'll hit it just a little bit longer to straighten it up. It's just anal retentive more than anything else. Sure, electrically it's fine. Good heat flow off this thing. It's probably going to have to be good enough. So I can't get it to turn much. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. Let's reflow that one end. This machine? No. Is it good for a person? Probably. There you are. There's our 61. It's in there nice and straight. And now our 60, which is on the other end. As always, I am wearing a static strap. I'm doing this all on the static mat. My soldering iron is ESD protected as well. This last thing I want to do is blow up this kind of rare old card. That would be bad.
Gotta turn this around. I can't do it, Lefty. My wife is left-handed, though, so I'm always uh, considerate of her. Uh, whenever I design something, left-handed people keep them in mind. Touch more solder. Nice. I went down real nice. It's nice and straight. That was our 60. That one looks nice. Our 60 is done. Okay, replace C36 and C37 C with 470 Picos. 36 and 37. That's a 37. Okay, there's 37 there, and C36 is on the other end. The person that wrote those instructions and made their life hard for themselves, they um, did some of the components were too small. They should have just picked the same size components they used on the board. Maybe that's all they had. I'm not sure. Now look, it costs more to get the right size. Okay. So I need a uh, four seventy Pico. Let's see what we got here. Four seventy Pico, so you need to come in on check one thing. My one is hope it's a micro, those have to be a lot bigger. Okay. I never really, I only heard about this card once before working on it. It's kind of a neat concept of uh, building the entire Mega Drive into a ISA card. So you actually have a complete Sega Genesis on your board, which is kind of cool actually. All you gotta do is just reset your machine, and you have a PC. It's actually kind of a cool concept. Um, I guess with stuff like uh, the Xbox, it kind of makes it moot because it's just a PC anyway. It's not you don't need a special card because the Xbox is just a fancy uh, 
PC. Never did get an Xbox though. Never, not a, not a big Microsoft fanboy myself. I'm a, been running Linux for over 20 years now on my uh, home computers. I got hacked really bad back in 1999, back when there was no such thing as security in Windows. They were mutually exclusive. And um, he's like, you know what? Enough. So I literally drove to a store and bought uh, Linux Mandrake 5, I believe, was out at the time. It was a KDE based, uh, well, the Red Hat based operating system. And I think uh, they bought. They bought another company called uh, uh, South American Company that also is a Linux distro company and they changed their name to Mandriva and kind of lost support. And I switched over to Ubuntu and oh, had to be. What year was that? 12? Yeah, so they had to be 2012. So I switched over to. Ubuntu then I mean I've to me an operating system is just a tool it's just whatever works I kind of like I I mean I've played around with Fedora and CentOS and Suzy or Suze or whatever the heck her name is however you pronounce it so Really, can't uh, can't complain about Linux. Once you get used to it, you really don't mind at all anymore. It's just a little different way of thinking, and like I said, it's a tool that does what it's supposed to do. So I never really got into Mac OS. It just <laughs> too much stuff hidden under the hood. Um, just not my cup of tea. I mean, it's it's pretty, but I don't think it's a for people who like to tinker. It's not a very conducive operating system to that. I'm having a heck of a time with this one. Probably because it's wedged between two uh, two other components. Let's see if I can get it this time. The surface tension, the solder is killing me. I think I'm gonna pull this one and do another one. I've overheated it. You can see a little black forming on the insulator. Even with the iron turned down, I'm not that happy. Okay. One more try. That's why you buy 10 of them, you don't buy two of them. Particularly when they cost a few cents a piece. Not much point trying to salvage a 10 cent part.
forget to use the scope for this one. I'm not using electronic one. I gotta use the, the stereo. you the place yeah the biggest problem you run into is uh, with conventional with the any kind of electronic microscope you will never get uh, depth perception off of it it's because all cameras are just two dimensional devices really Let's get my helping hands over here hold you up while I do this. Sorry about not showing you what I'm doing. I have to use the microscope to do this one. This is really hard to do. Uh, and talk about at the same time. I don't have one of those fancy scopes with a built-in camera. Oh, tombstone it. Darn it. Tombstoning is when you accidentally uh, put a um, component up on its end instead of being flat, so it looks like a tombstone. Still not entirely happy. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Still a little off. Yeah, it's not what I wanted. Get my offset tweezers in here. Oh, don't you like your home? This, my friends, is why I charge a lot of money for doing this. This is actually a pain.
side of you, make sure you look alright. Look at the bead. Okay. I'll give you a little more heat. Good. Good enough. Good enough for government work, they always say. It's a joke when you work on government programs. Alright. Oh, that sucked. Alright, so that's it for putting those in. Then the next page. And then... Add four point sevens. To these fat boys here. Four point seven microfarad. I want to make sure I put the right ones in there because <laughs> there's no markings on it. I was ninety nine point nine percent sure, but why not be a hundred percent sure? Oh, by the way, if you're ever looking for a really neat tool, I use this little. Uh, I don't get paid by these people, so this is a hand tech. Um, digital oscilloscope and digital multimeter it's actually kind of cool because it's a two-channel scope um they also make a version that has a um a uh function ge arbitrary function gener waveform generator in there i didn't really need that so i just got the scope and dmm but the nice thing about the dmm it does have volts ohms of course it does ac as well um, and it has diode checking and it has a uh, capacitance meter, which I just use to uh, check the uh, capacitance. I'll show you. This is supposed to be a 4.7. And you can get the probes on there. Like I said, if I can get the probe on there. Come on. Biggest complaint, backlight turns off too quickly. Four point five seven, which is close enough. Um there's always a about twenty percent um variation allowed on capacitors depending on the quality so that's well within spec the other one i measured was actually coming in at like 4.69 which is actually pretty damn impressive okay so now i need to find 
R97, let's see, C100, C100, where are you? C100, so that looks like this here. C100, C100, oh, it's up here, okay. So, uh, capacitors add up, and um, if you put them in parallel, it, you add their capacitance. So you put two 4.7s, you'll get um, 9.4 microfarads. So, where are we? C100, I'm just putting it in parallel with that guy there. That should be easy enough. They stuck it on the right. You know what? I'll do the same thing. C100, I'll add solder to both sides. C100, put you in parallel there. Let's see what we can do here. Or it could stack it on top. Either way would work. This is why it was important to get, for me, the same size components to make my life a whole lot easier in terms of uh, sticking these together. Speaking of sticking things together, I am going to be lazy and I'm going to stick a little bit of tape on the back of it so it doesn't go anywhere. Where I work, they are just throwing out a whole bunch of this uh, pressure sensitive adhesive, which is like industrial grade uh, double sided tape. And it's like it just expired, they couldn't use it anymore, but for what I do, it's just fine. So I gotta put a little bit of that down. So it doesn't go walking away on me. Because the surface tension is higher, unfortunately, than the uh, strength of the it sticks to the part a bit, unfortunately. So when I go to move the um, iron off, it just pulls the entire part with it because both sides are flowed. Let's see. I'm probably going to do the same thing when I put the components on the other. So I just left a little tiny bit of double-sided tape there. Bridge the other side. There we go. Oh, it turned out nice. 
Sweet. So I ended up, uh, let's see, there we go. I'm lost. There they are. Bridge those together. Get her. Get her. Oh my goodness. Bridge them together. So that's done there. I think my language skills are failing after being in this pandemic too long. Let's make it prettier. That's prettier. Let's see. Yeah, that looks nicer. No, we're at R97. Where are you? R97. Not just one here. It's just bank here. And R97 across the one next to it. Well, that's kind of an interesting one there. Okay. R97 to. A through hole component. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I think I'll uh, hit that tomorrow because I'm getting a little tired tonight. Yeah, well, I'll do that tomorrow. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I just have this one more cap to throw in, and then uh, I'll be installing the chips tomorrow. Thanks for watching.